My name is Sophie Nicole, and this is GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program. This video is a tutorial, mostly for a friend of mine, but uploaded to YouTube uh, in case anybody else wants it, and for ease of sharing. So, I play tabletop RPGs using Roll20.net. And a friend of mine also runs games on Roll20.net and has asked if uh, I would show them how to make tokens <coughs> for the virtual tabletop. This is what this video is for. So we need to start with a character image. Now you can right click and in the context menu hit open with and then choose GIMP or file open as layers and then go to wherever you have your character image. In this case I'm using this image for uh, for an example. This is Ferretta's character uh, Fen. Uh, damned if I can remember her full name. Uh, I'm bad at names, so anyway. Uh, I'm using this picture with permission. I contacted Ferretta on her for affinity and uh, got permission. So I am using this image with permission and I should have uh, that credited in the description also. So you have this image here. You also have this uh, list here which only has one item which is your layers. Uh, that's going to be important shortly. But uh, you can see somewhere here the zoom level. Uh, let's pop it up uh, just a little bit more. The way I do this generally, I prefer bigger images over smaller images for reasons we'll go into. Next step, you've got your character image, whatever character you're trying to turn into a token. You got your character image. Next step, open as layers. Uh, where did I have that? Uh, documents, tabletop. I have a lot of stuff. Like, don't, don't, uh, don't make fun of me. Okay, so you can find or make these rings. Uh, the ring I'm using here, you just double click on it, convert. You want something like this that is transparent. That's important. It has to be transparent. Uh, you can find images like this all over the internet. This one came with a humble bundle uh, asset pack, I think. Uh, I've been using this for, uh, I think, multiple years, so I'm not entirely sure. So, you want the scale tool, which doubles as a transform tool, uh, and take your ring and put it where you want, making sure that the top and sides of the ring are within the picture. There are ways to expand the canvas for the uh, picture underneath. I don't really re understand how to do that. I've never needed to know. But either way, odds are your ring is going to be not the size you wanted. It. It'll be too big or it'll be too small. And that's what the scale tool is for. Usually I like to have a nice bust in in my tokens, not just, you know, not just 
the face, right? I want like head and shoulders. And if a character has something really prominent like horns or in Fen's case, really big fucking ears, uh, I like to have that included. So you want to get your ring positioned and sized how you like it. And then hit enter. You can also hit scale and it'll s set the changes. Now, go back to the first image, or the first layer, I mean. You want to right click, make sure it has an alpha channel. If it does not, hit add alpha channel. The reason being, you want your token to be able to be transparent. And if it doesn't have an alpha channel, it won't. The, the, there's some issue with that where it won't become transparent. So, next step, you want to clean up around your ring here. Now, if you have a drawing tablet or something like that where you can use a stylus to draw, you can do that with GIMP. Uh, I have one, but it's behind me in a drawer and. Uh, just to do up a token, it, too much effort to get it out and plug it in. So, uh, but if that's easier for you, you can't actually do that. GIMP lets you do that. So, next step, you want the eraser tool. Depending on how large your canvas is, uh, you may want to resize your eraser tool. I'm going to, you, you can see the size here, and it can get really fucking huge, and it can get really teeny tiny. Uh, I just sort of size it until it looks useful. Uh, so that should be fine. Uh, very important, make sure you're on the layer with the character image, not the layer with the token ring, because when you're on this layer, you are doing edits only to this layer, not to both layers. So when you come over here to erase, you can see how underneath the uh, eraser tool, it's transparent. I, I think it does that automatically when you have an alpha channel, but if it doesn't, there's some setting somewhere. Uh, somewhere that uh, does that. I think it's automatic though. I don't remember having to change that. But you want to erase very carefully inside this token ring, but not going all the way inside. Because if you go all the way inside like this, if, if you, for example, slip and all, I, I did that, then when you plop this token onto the virtual tabletop, you will see through in that spot. And you don't generally want that. Uh, there's probably situations in which that would be helpful, uh, in which case, as the situation demands it, you can, you know, you do you. But for most tokens, I find that undesirable. So you want to make sure you uh, go into the ring so that it's nice and clean on the outside, but don't cross all the way through the ring. And I recommend doing this in short little bits because it's infuriating to get part way through uh, or to get almost all the way around without having lifted your click and then you go through and then you have to do it all over again. So little, little shots like this. And of course, if you have a tablet that lets you like a drawing tablet of some, some kind of Cintiq or whatever, uh, that makes this easier because you're just drawing. I'm using a mouse so it's less easy, but it's still not difficult. 
So now that you've outlined it in a transparency, you're going to need this in a box. And you want the box to be transparent. So give yourself lots of space here to give your, uh, to give crop area. You, uh, the more space you give here, the more likely it is you've given yourself space. I, I have more than once thought I had enough space and then I do the go to crop and there's still something left over. Um, but yeah, it's easy enough. Just clear a nice box and if you really need to, you can like zoom in and make sure you've gotten all of the little bits because sometimes there'll still be a little bit of uh, quote unquote ink in here that needs to be gotten rid of, it will show up on the tabletop if it's left. Um, but yeah, once this is taken out, we move on to the next step, which is the crop tool. And you can just drag and drop or uh, band box however much you want. Like you, you can see this is clearly not sufficient but the sides, all four sides have an adjust and then all four corners have an adjust. So just real quick and easy, just like that. Now if you're like me and you're anal retentive and you have OCD, you're going to want this to be like pixel perfect. If you're not OCD and anal retentive, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect. You can see this token isn't because the top bit of the uh, ring is sort of cut off here and there's a little bit extra over here. And But this is just an example to show how it's done. So it's, it's not that big a deal. Once you have the token outlined like you want it, just hit enter and there you have it. Now if you want to keep this GIMP file with its layers you can file save norm like normal. I don't usually do that because most of the time when I'm making a token it just it's I, I don't, I just need the token and I don't need to come back and do a whole bunch of edits or I don't expect to need that. Uh, but you can do that if you feel the need. Uh, but that's not going to give you your token. That's just saving the GIMP file. What you want to do to save the token is export as. Now very important, regardless of where you're saving it, Select file type and scroll down to PNG. I think there are other file form, uh, image formats that will allow transparency. I don't know what they are. I just use PNG. PNG works for me. If you know of another image format that you prefer that does allow transparency, go for it. Uh, you do you you know, that, that's fine. But what you don't want to do is save as a JPEG because it does not do transparency. I found that out the hard way. So you want to save it as a PNG. This one was already PNG, so no big deal, but this is a tutorial showing you how to do it. Now, I'm going to save this into my downloads folder just because, but you can go up here and name the token whatever you want. And then export, and this has a bunch of different um, settings and options that I don't know what do. Realistically, in the vast majority of cases, it should be fine to just then hit export. And there you have it. You'll have the token saved, and uh, yeah, that's all you need. Um, see? Token. Uh, 
that's all there is to it really and of course if you're at the okay you see you can see a little bit of uh, pixel here that isn't transparent so it would be simple enough to go back to the tabletop or the uh, edit and then just swoop across there and then re-export and there you have it um, of course if you already know that you're needing tokens and such you already know that these can be dragged and dropped onto the Roll20 tabletop or the Fantasy Grounds I believe works the same way most virtual tabletops are as far as I know pretty user friendly so uh, that's that's it you just put it onto your virtual tabletop resize it as needed you can do this with any image um, I'll see if I can't find some free assets for like the token rings and link them in the description uh, because I've gotten a few of them actually recently uh, I think on the DMs Guild website uh, and of course it's not that hard to make them if you know what you're doing so uh, just transparency effects and circles so there you have it making a custom token this has been GIMP